Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochy. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How how we doing? Well, we were all pretty excited. We just learned. I know you might have other bigger focuses that four of the five Rangers finalists for All-Star Starter are leading their category as of now. So we're all pretty stoked about that. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, you know, that's great for these guys. Uh, as, as they uh, should be, they're right there. And, you know, they, this is a group and, you know, I don't think they're thinking about it. Uh, I think they're looking uh, down the road, but certainly uh, is a big deal. And so I'm hoping uh, they all make it. Trust me. Uh, uh, I've, I've been fortunate to watch their play uh, here the first half. So it would be something well earned. You can only vote once per day, but that's per email address. How many email addresses do you have? And do you have any tips to help people be able to email vote more? <laughs> I, I don't have a, but one, but, uh, you know, there's guys that figure it out. People that figure it out that, um, you know, can send in all those votes. So that's good. I, I'm glad to see uh, our fans and we're, we're grateful for them. Uh, you know, for them to uh, support our guys that uh, have done well here the first half. Absolutely. I think uh, we got a lot of Tolos out there that are listening right now. They're like, hey, we're going to do everything we can to help uh, help yeah, these Rangers right. get an edge here. Boji, I'm, you're, you said that you had a couple guys on this team that probably could use a little mental break on the mental side of things. And, and you've been through 162 and, and plus many times. Like is this that time of year where, you know, maybe for, I don't know if it's younger players or other players going through things where they kind of start, you know, lagging a little bit? Well, it, you know, there's a lot going on now. Yeah, in fact, I talked to uh, the position players yesterday. Uh, you know, if, any, if I've learned anything, uh, you know, at the midseason point, I'm talking about this game, uh, that it's important uh, to do all you can to – have that maniacal focus and uh, that ability uh, uh, to keep that edge because, you know, you get to the all-star break. One is making the all-star team. Yeah. You know, I'm sure guys from all over the leagues, uh, both leagues are, you know, they're, they're hoping to make it. They probably at some point, they probably put a little pressure on themselves. I'm not talking about the stars, you know, they're, they're in almost automatically. So it's a big deal for them. And, and you understand that. The other thing is, of course, the break, and the break's coming. So there's no need to talk about it, what your plans are, whatever. That's that's what uh, I think we have to remind ourselves. Uh, this is a grind of a schedule uh, right now. What we you know we're going through, uh, and so you know they haven't had a lot of days off. One day off, and that was uh, um, you know getting in New York at three thirty in the morning. So um, you know we. We have to just be aware of, uh, you know, guys not on the physical, just on the physical side, but on the mental side, maybe they could use a break. So uh, Josh Young's going to get a break today. Uh, the Bears, who's been playing so well. You know, and also, you know, it gets guys in there. But uh, it's just that time of year that, you know, you're trying to stay away from distractions and uh, just keeping your focus and, and that edge uh, that you need. You know, we we usually have Mike Bassick on the show with us, and he pitched in the major leagues, and he was telling us yesterday about, like, what he called dead arm season. And I know there's been some concern about the average fastball value drop from Evaldi. Is there anything you can tell us there, or do you think that does kind of just fit into the idea that this might be dead arm season for pitchers? Well, I, I think there's something to that, yes. Uh, you know, it's... Uh... It's going to happen with guys, uh, uh, pitchers that, uh, especially I think starters, but also, but not, you know, I'll say relievers too. If, if the usage is way up, uh, uh, so you you have to be uh, aware of uh, you know where they're at. Uh, I thought his stuff was up a little bit from the last start. He, I think it was something uh, something he felt mechanical, but he'll get an extra day's rest here. Now, with that said, with uh, Bradford here, uh, we're getting Reagan stretched out. Uh, trust me, uh, see why I'm talking about Chris Young, myself, uh, Mike Maddox. Uh, you know, we talk about this quite a bit. And, and if we have to skip a guy, we have to IEL a guy. If uh, if the alarm goes off uh, to to that point, then uh, we will do that. Uh, we're we're not in in a in a mode that hey, we got to win every game. We have to sacrifice, uh, you know, these guys a little bit and pay for it down the road. No, we we don't want to do that. So. 
Um, a lot of guys here, uh, you know, with their eyes uh, and experience, hopefully uh, that will help these guys. The you know one, one of the other pitchers uh, in case they. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I thought you. I thought you stalled out there. Go ahead. No, I, I was done. I was just adding a little bit. You know, I, I'm just saying. You know, not not just on Nate, but uh, all the pitchers. Uh, you know, we always look at innings, uh, where where they were the year before, uh, where they're at, uh, the type of games they pitch. So, a lot of variables involved in all this. Uh, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Really appreciate that. I Mike has always talked about this too when we talk about like over, like team meetings and manager calls a team meeting or you know players call a meeting and etc. And he says, I think uh, Mike says something, Kevin. Like he has, you have one a year, uh, and and you don't, you kind of have to know when to call that. Do you kind of ascribe to that? Because it sounds based on what we hear from you. There are lots, so many little meetings that you get a lot of things cleaned up before you even have to get to a team meeting. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you what, I, I like the, the way it's done now. Uh, you know, when I first started managing or even when I played going back, when I, when I came up 78, you really didn't have meetings. Uh, to Mike's point, you may have maybe one meeting, but uh, now with uh, the meetings every day we have, uh, um, uh, the hitters meeting, you know, they go over starting uh, pitcher uh, uh, or pitcher that day. Um, you know, Mike gets with uh, our pitching group uh, first game of the series, but he also meets with that starting pitcher that day because we want to customize uh, what what our attack is uh, for that pitcher and his type of stuff. So, you know, it, it would just allow me to go in if I want to say something, you know, and that way you don't feel like you're calling a meeting. So, and that you know, you don't want to send a sense of panic. All right, guys, let's get together, whatever. But um, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't have this one meeting. You know, I'll I'll have, a, you know, a few. I, you try not to have too many, but because uh, then you know it gets it gets a little uh, uh, old. I think for the guys. Oh no, here comes another meeting. But the way we do it here, it's the groups are already together. I can say a few words like yesterday, just talking to the position players and uh, so it, it really works out well in this clubhouse I, I don't know if you've been in here it's awesome uh, and we have a theater when you know where the guys sit up there and so it just makes it a lot easier too than have to call them all round them up and uh, call a meeting in the clubhouse I know you talked about this with the media on Saturday after the game against the Yankees but for our fans who you know haven't read it haven't heard it I was hoping you could kind of walk us through some of your thoughts about the team's base running, particularly the high number of outs at home plate thus far this year. Right, right. And, um, you know, that was something that we uh, uh, even uh, discussed uh, yesterday, too. Uh, um, you know, we, we have made some outs on the bases, uh, not just home plate, but, you know, just a couple pickoffs, uh, uh, you know, that are really shouldn't happen. Uh, sometimes that can be just a little – uh, lack of focus or just drifting mentally a little bit. Uh, and that gets back to what I'm talking about this time of year, man. You you got to have that maniacal focus on every play, where, wherever you're at, hitting the defense or running the bases out. Now, uh, as far as home plate, you know, we, we've had a lot of, uh, uh, we've scored a lot of runs. So there's been a lot more sure. action at home plate. So, you know, that's going to bring probably more outs at home plate and, uh, you know, Tony and I, Bees does a great job, and you know, we've had our conversations too. And uh, uh, so, I, I think that on the last one, you know, we talked, and uh, you know, right field was a tough spot there. Two outs. Uh, we don't want auto send, but ninety percent of the time, you're going to send them. You know, we try to get that run in, and you know, we get thrown out. Uh, so that's going to happen. Trust me, I coach third base. That's a tough job, mm -hmm. and uh, there's probably there's probably been a couple. I know that uh, even Bees has said, "Yeah, that probably should should have held them there." There's been times when I could have done something different, or everybody could have done something different. So, you know, we're we're you know again the, the message at the start of the season, we're as one here. We're we're all together, and uh, you know we're all going to look back and say, "Well, I could have done this different." So that's just part of the game. Does third base coach ever feel like a thankless job or a job where you don't want people to know your name because it would only be like, <laughs> well, Bruce Bochy sent him home and cost us a run. 
Right, right. Now you're you're right on there. You're, you're absolutely on. There. I've been there, and I tell you what, it's a bad feeling when you send a guy and he gets thrown out by 15 feet. Uh, um, you know, and that's when the fans start hooting on you a little bit too. It's uh, it's not fun. But bless you, you know, you take it hard, uh, especially that game we lost one nothing. I mean, that's we all wear our our moves or decisions. Uh, uh, that's you know that's what we do because we care and. Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, to your point, yeah, that happens. I, I tell you, a play real quick that uh, I got Bears done. I was coaching third. You know, who Larry Walker is. Right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's a he was one of the best outfielders and best throwers, and uh, so base hit, same thing, two outs. Uh, we're at the old Jack Murphy Qualcomm in, in uh, San Diego, and um, actually uh, Tony Gwynn hit a bullet to him and. Uh, he caught it one hop. It's one of those plays where I know I can't send him. And uh, so I stop him. Well, Walker had the wherewithal. This is how good he was, knowing that, well, Boach isn't going to send him here, you know, because of my reputation. He comes up, and I go down the line and let him come down the line before I hold him. He comes up and fires a bullet to third base and gets him. Mm. <laughs> and so, you know, you feel so helpless. I mean, it's. It you know happens all of us, uh, but they're all learning uh, uh, experiences, and uh, you draw from all of them. Pretty great feeling though when they hit one out of the park, and you get to give them that handshake before they touch the plate, right? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I like it when we send them there. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Now, uh, I, I guess one of the I know it's kind of difficult to kind of talk about this discussion because you have this team that you're focusing on right now, but there are. You know, there is something coming where there's a, an opportunity to make some moves to add to this team. Uh, and I'm kind of curious if you, when you talk with Chris Young and have this communication back and forth, I feel like he knows the game so well that y'all are probably on the same page a lot of times. But is there communication of, hey, I still need, I still need a setup guy, or I still need this uh, to add to maybe the bullpen or or the rest of the roster? You know, what's what's that communication like between the two of you? Oh, it's pretty much daily. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's an ongoing uh, uh, conversation with uh, everybody. Uh, you know, my uh, myself, uh, Chris, of course, his uh, his baseball ops. Uh, uh, even yesterday, you know, he came down. You know, they're working their tails off to see if there's something out there that makes sense. I think you're getting to the point now where clubs are going to make a a decision on, on what they're going to do, whether they're going to add or sell. Uh, um, you know, we're getting a better idea of what our needs are. And so uh, that's that's going to really uh, get ramped up, I think you, you'll see as we get into July. It's a significantly longer process in terms of the development, but I was curious, same thing about communication when it comes to, like, the MLB draft, because we're only, you know, a couple weeks away from that. Do you have communications about the MLB draft, or you're like, yeah, we probably won't see whoever we draft for a, for a bet. No, no, I, I have interest. We all do. Uh, yeah, we were talking about the, the draft uh, yesterday quite a bit. Uh, yeah, with uh, different players. Uh, yeah, no, it's fun for us. Uh, you know, we, we get a chance to watch these guys. Uh, of course, you had the College World Series going on. Right. And, and, you know, all the teams that uh, were trying to get there. So, you know, we, we see the names. We see the player. And, uh, and uh See why he keeps us up on uh, kind of what their thoughts are, what they're looking at. Uh, it's going to be uh, interesting, uh, you know, especially the first five or six uh, picks, um, which way clubs go, because uh, I think everybody has a little different philosophy, and uh, you know, it's it's a big draft. I mean, it can be a game changing changer for the franchise, so uh, it, it's important. We've been trying really hard to push Paul Skeens the. <laughs> mustachioed pitcher from LSU down the board so the Rangers could pick him up at number four. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's some bad too. Uh, there's uh, uh, some really, really uh, good names out there. Uh, I mean, these guys, uh, you know, I look at the first five or six picks, you know, and you, I, you know, sometimes you, you, you may say this every year, but uh, it just seems like there's some really good uh, guys out there and, I tell you what, we're we're lucky how that uh, lottery went for us, you know, to get the fourth pick. So uh, I know, you know, our our crew they're very excited that uh, you know we we do get the fourth pick. 
you think that Nathaniel Lowe set the like the trend of mustaches for everybody else now? Like I see everybody else wearing a mustache. It looked like oh, Lowe was wearing Boach? it first, or maybe was it you, Boach, that started the trend? Yeah, I don't know who, who was the trend setter there. That's a good one. Uh, you know, we had a uh, '80s theme flight uh, as we went to uh, Chicago, uh, and. It wasn't my idea. Actually, it was a family trip thing. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Bobby Wilson, my catching instructor, dressed as. It's got to be old you, right? As, yeah, dressed as me in an old Padre uh, uni back in 84 with my mustache. Mm -hmm. He came out, and uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, you know, guys had fun with that. And Dave Ward, too. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know who started this one. I, you know, I, I was thinking Reagan's did. Oh, I don't know. I forgot Reagan's. We saw him at camp. He had, oh, did that's have that mustache rolling out. Okay, yeah, that was nice. so he might be yeah. he might be the guy. Now, clearly, the numbers for y'all with runners in scoring position this year are still ridiculously good. Y'all were on a historic pace. Have you noticed anything different in the maybe the last two weeks or maybe the broader month of June when the success has not been as prolific with runners in scoring position? Yeah, you know, it's always. Uh, uh, that's always a hard question to answer. And yet it, it was hard to you know, sustain what, what we were doing, but uh, I will say uh, I've seen the fellows uh, just getting a little more aggressive than they've been expanding a little bit more. It comes from, you know, wanting to help out, you know, wanting to maybe be the guy. Uh, and that's not who we were early. Uh, you know, they would uh, pass that baton, uh, uh, and we'd wear down the pitcher, uh, and we had a great game, uh, and we stuck with that plan against Cole uh, up in New York. Uh, that's kind of who who we have been. And uh, so I, I'd say, if anything, that's up a tick is uh, our swing percentage uh, with, with runners in scoring position. The last thing I was really curious about is at 120 today, we're going to talk with David Clyde, and I'm sure you're familiar with the story. The team is honoring him tonight. We've learned so much about baseball since then, but what do you think reflecting back on the idea of drafting a high schooler and then a couple weeks later starting him in a major league baseball game? Yeah, I, I remember well. I, I I mean, that was my time. I mean, so, uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it was all that long ago, but it was, but uh, I mean, obviously incredible talent and I guess he did a lot to, you know, put some, uh, uh fans in the seats. Uh, uh, yeah, just that, that's a hard deal. I think it's easier for a pitcher than a position player, but how uh, K line did it. Uh, I mean, look, Joe Nuxall was in the big leagues at 15 years old. So, wow. you know, it, it's been done and, uh, you know, there's outliers everywhere. And, you know, I guess David was looking at, you know, looked as one of those outliers, but uh, just it's such a hard game. It's a lot to put on the kid. And, uh, uh, but, you know, hey, I, I, I could see it happening again at some point. I'm being honest, you know, you get a guy that throws 100 and with control, you just, they just put him right in the big leagues. Wow. <laughs> Man. Now, now i got to go study up on Joe Nuxle. Yeah, Thanks. I'm hey, actually folks. kind of oh, looking at hey, him. He's an amazing guy, man. Really was. I had a chance to spend some time with him. I was a big Reds fan. Fifteen years old, served in the war. I mean, this uh, you know, long time uh, announcer. Uh, uh, really, really nice man. His quote: "I was pitching against seventh, eighth, and ninth graders, and all of a sudden, there's Stan Musial." <laughs> Golly, That's crazy! Isn't it? That is crazy. That's crazy. Excellent stuff as always. Appreciate the time very much, good sir. We'll catch up with you next week. All right, guys. All right, thanks. We'll see you later.